Eternalism is a philosophical approach to the ontological nature of time, which takes the view that all points in time are equally real, as opposed to the presentist idea that only the present is real and the growing block universe theory of time in which the past and present are real, while the future is not. Modern advocates often take inspiration from the way time is modeled as a dimension in the theory of relativity giving time a similar ontology to that of space. This would mean that time is just another dimension, that future events are already there, and that there is no objective flow of time. It is sometimes referred to as the block time, or block universe, theory due to its description of space-time as an unchanging four-dimensional block, as opposed to the view of the world as a three-dimensional space modulated by the passage of time. Problems with the flow of time. Conventionally, time is divided into three distinct regions, the past, the present, and the future. Using that representational model, the past is generally seen as being immutably fixed, and the future as undefined and nebulous. As time passes, the moment that was once the present becomes part of the past, and part of the future, in turn, becomes the new present. In this way time is said to pass, with a distinct present moment, moving forward into the future and leaving the past behind. Within this intuitive understanding of time is the philosophy of presentism, which argues that only the present exists. It does not travel forward through an environment of time, moving from a real point in the past and toward a real point in the future. Instead, the present simply changes. The past and future do not exist and are only concepts used to describe the real, isolated, and changing present. This conventional model presents a number of difficult philosophical problems, and seems difficult to reconcile with currently accepted scientific theories such as the theory of relativity. Simultaneity Special relativity suggests that the concept of simultaneity is not universal. According to the relativity of simultaneity, Observers in different frames of reference can have different perceptions of whether a given pair of events happened at the same time or at different times, with there being no physical basis for preferring one frame's judgments over another's. So, in special relativity there can be no physical basis for picking out a unique set of events that are all happening simultaneously in the present. Many philosophers have argued that relativity implies eternalism, although he disagrees in a qualified sense. Philosopher of science Dean Rickles notes that the consensus among philosophers seems to be that special and general relativity are incompatible with presentism. For example, Christian Wuthrich writes, Presentists have responded in a variety of ways to the pressure exerted by the riot dyke putnam argument. A presentist could deny naturalism. Such denial could take different forms. One could, as does Jonathan Lowe, claim that senior is not a theory about time but about something else instead. Alternatively, one could retort by accepting that senior speaks to the geometry of space-time but reject that this has any ontological import, as does Dean Zimmerman. Second, a presentist might reject senior realism, simply asserting that senior is not approximately true of the world. This could occur simply on a priori grounds. Also, considerations from quantum mechanics can be invoked in an attempt to establish that senior is false or incomplete insofar as it lacks an absolute, privileged frame of reference. This response comes in different flavors. Collapse dynamics require a preferred frame in which the collapse occurs. Bohmian interpretations are incompatible with senior and invoke Bell's theorem to argue that some tenets of senior must be given up. A presentist might simply bite the bullet and consequently relativize existence. Since what is present is relative to an inertial frame, what exists becomes fragmented in that it depends on the choice of frame. Another is to accept that senior offers a perfectly empirically adequate theory, but to insist that absolute simultaneity still exists. It is just that we cannot possibly detect the privileged frame of reference which determines the present. 
In other words, absolute simultaneity is not empirically accessible. The metaphysics fully relies on postulated extra structure that can't even in principle be observed. It violates Occam's razor so crassly that the move cannot be justified by putting some post-verificationist philosophy of science on one's flag. Christian Wadrich no presentism in quantum gravity, in space, time, and spacetime. Physical and philosophical implications of Minkowski's unification of space and time however, there are some, such as Dean Zimmerman, who have argued that it is possible to accept the physical predictions of relativity while adopting an alternative interpretation of the theory in which there is a single privileged frame whose judgments about length time and simultaneity are the true ones, even though there would be absolutely no empirical way to distinguish this frame from other frames, and no real experience could identify it. When appealing to findings from empirically well-grounded disciplines, philosophers face a strong temptation to overstate their case, especially if their philosophical opponents can be relied on to be relatively innocent of new developments in the relevant science. I fear that some B theorists have succumbed to the temptation, judging by the relish with which they often pronounce a verdict based on relativity. They can practically hear the crunch of the lowly metaphysician's armor giving way, as they bring the full force of incontrovertible physical facts down upon our a theoretically addled heads. But what actually hits us, and how hard is the blow? Senior is false, GR's future is highly uncertain, and the presentist's conflict with either version of relativity is shallio. Since the presentist's manifold can satisfy the same geometrical description as AB theorist's manifold, and afford explanations of all the same phenomena in precisely the same style, in these circumstances, how could appeal to senior or GR justify the frequent announcements that the A-theory-B-theory theory dispute has been settled by physics, not philosophy? Dean Zimmerman, Presentism and the Space-Time Manifold, in the Oxford Handbook of Time Time as Object or Environment, while the present is intuitively understood as the object that moves through the environment of time. It is common to also describe time as an object that moves, in the same way that a passenger on a train perceives the environment passing by. This perception of the passage or flow of time can be confused with the previous idea of the present moving through time, leading to the misunderstanding that time is moving through time, i.e., that it is moving through itself. This illogical premise can lead to circular questions asking how fast time travels per unit of time. The concept of time passing can be considered to be internally inconsistent. By asking how much time goes by in an hour, the question how fast does time pass seems to have no satisfactory answer, in which answers such as a second per second would be, as some would argue, circular and thus false. In addition, even if we do accept the above answer, then the statement, a second per second, can be expressed as a fraction which is always equal to 1. But this 1 has no meaning beyond being a number and is thus also the wrong kind of answer. Therefore, the argument goes, the rate of the passage of time is nonsensical. There is a major problem though in that the question of time is no different from space. One can similarly ask how much space is contained in a meter and face a similar objection. Time passing may be seen as a metaphor for the continuous human experience of some expected future events becoming directly experienced qualia, while experienced qualia becoming just objects of memory. McTaggart's argument in the unreality of time, M.E. McTaggart divided time into an A series and AB series with the A-series describing events in absolute tense terms and the B-series describing events in terms of untense temporal relations. He also added the notion of a C-series, a series that has an order but with no notion of time, like a series of letters. 
He went on to argue that the A-series was needed for anything deserving the name Time, since he argued that only the A-series can allow for genuine change, and he considered change to be an essential part of any reasonable definition of time. But, he argued, the A-series was logically incoherent, so he concluded that time was unreal, and since he also believed the B-series depended on the A-series, he also concluded that only the C-series could remain as a meaningful ordering. However, various philosophers have held that the remaining B-series qualifies as a valid framework for a theory of time, sometimes called the B-theory of time, the eternalist alternative. Eternalism addresses these various difficulties by considering all points in time to be equally valid frames of reference, or equally real, if one prefers. It does not do away with the concept of past and future but instead considers them directions rather than states of being. Whether some point in time is in the future or past is entirely dependent on which frame of reference you are using as a basis for observing it. Since an observer at any given point in time can only remember events that are in the past relative to him, and not events that are in the future relative to him, the subjective illusion of the passage of time is maintained. The asymmetry of remembering past events but not future ones, as well as other irreversible events that progress in only one temporal direction gives rise to the arrow of time. In the view suggested by eternalism, there is no passage of time, the ticking of a clock measures durations between events much as the marks on a measuring tape measures distances between places. Eternalism has implications for the concept of free will, in that it proposes that future events are as immutably fixed and impossible to change as past events. Eternalism makes two assumptions, which are separable. One is that time is a full-fledged real dimension. The other is immutability. The latter is not a necessary consequence of the first. A universe in which changes are possible may be indistinguishable from the fully deterministic many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, in which there are multiple growing block universes. Philosophical objections. Philosophers such as John Lucas argue that the block universe gives a deeply inadequate view of time. It fails to account for the passage of time, the preeminence of the present, the directedness of time and the difference between the future and the past. The comment summarizes the main objections in more detail. Their subjective sense of flow whilst the idea that there is some objective sense in which time is flowing can be denied. The fact that conscious beings feel as though it is in some sense flowing cannot. However, if the flow of time didn't have an objective existence, then it is argued conscious beings would simultaneously experience all moments in their lives. A response is that since the brain presumably perceives time through information processing of external stimuli, not by extrasensory perception, and obeys the laws of causality, it is hard to see how the flow of time, whether it exists or not, could make any subjective difference. All conscious beings are built to perceive time as a chain of events, whether or not it occurs as such. Apparent differences between past, present and future Many of our common sense attitudes treat the past, present and future preferentially. We apparently fear death because we believe that we will no longer exist after we die. However, if eternalism is correct, death is just one of our temporal borders and the forms of the world with you alive in it would continue to exist even as one consciously moves forward through time toward dissolution. You are about to go to the dentist, or you have already been. Common sense says you should prefer to have been already. But if eternalism is correct, then a resemblance of you in the future is already feeling better. When some unpleasant experience is behind us, we feel glad that it is over. But if the eternalism is correct, there is no such property as being over or no longer happening now, it continues to exist timelessly, alongside eternal, unchanging moments of perfect contentedness.
Status of conscious observers Eternalists often appeal to the idea that the flow of time is a subjective illusion. However, eternalism takes its inspiration from physics and needs to give a physical account of observers. One could, for instance, portray conscious observers as moving through the block universe, in some physically inexplicable way, in order to account for the subjective sense of a flow of time. But there is no need to do so to explain the subjective flow of time. Their opponents claim that the time flow itself, as an objective phenomenon, is physically inexplicable, and that physics is simply misrepresenting time in treating it as a dimension. Determinism and indeterminism Previously, it was noted that people tend to have very different attitudes towards the past and the future. This might be explained by an underlying attitude that the future is not fixed, but can be changed, and is therefore worth worrying about. If that is correct, the flow of time is perhaps less important to our intuitions than an open, undetermined future. In other words, a flow of time theory with a strictly determined future would not satisfy common sense intuitions about time. If indeterminism can be removed from flow of time theories, can it be added to eternalist theories? Regarding John G. Kramer's transactional interpretation, Kastner proposed that in order to preserve the elegance and economy of the interpretation, it may be necessary to consider offer and confirmation waves as propagating in a higher space of possibilities. In his discussion with Albert Einstein, Karl Popper argued against determinism. The main topic of our conversation was indeterminism. I tried to persuade him to give up his determinism, which amounted to the view that the world was a four-dimensional Parmenidian block universe in which change was a human illusion, or very nearly so. I argued that if men, or other organisms, could experience change and genuine succession in time, then this was real. It could not be explained away by a theory of the successive rising into to our consciousness of time slices which in some sense coexist, for this kind of rising into consciousness would have precisely the same character as that succession of changes which the theory tries to explain away. I also brought in the somewhat obvious biological arguments that the evolution of life and the way organisms behave, especially higher animals, cannot really be understood on the basis of any theory which interprets time as if it were something like another space coordinate. After all, we do not experience space coordinates, and this is because they are simply non-existent. We must beware of hypostatizing them, they are constructions which are almost wholly arbitrary. Why should we then experience the time coordinate, to be sure, the one appropriate to our inertial system, not only as real but also as absolute, that is, as unalterable and independent of anything we can do? The reality of time and change seemed to me the crux of realism. When I visited Einstein, Ship's Einstein volume in the Library of Living Philosophers had just been published. This volume contained a now famous contribution of Godel's, which employed, against the reality of time and change, arguments from Einstein's two relativity theories. Einstein had come out in that volume strongly in favor of realism, and he clearly disagreed with Godel's idealism. He suggested in his reply that Godel's solutions of the cosmological equations might have to be excluded on physical grounds. Now I try to present to Einstein Parmenides as strongly as I could my conviction that a clear stand must be made against any idealistic view of time, and I also tried to show that, though the idealistic view was compatible with both determinism and indeterminism, a clear stand should be made in favor of an open universe one in which the future was in no sense contained in the past or the present even though they do impose severe restrictions on it. I argued that we should not be swayed by our theories to give up realism, though I think that he was ready to admit, as I was, that we might be forced one day to give it up if very powerful arguments were to be brought against it. 
appealing to his own way of expressing things in theological terms, I said, if God had wanted to put everything into the world from the beginning, he would have created a universe without change, without organisms and evolution, and without man and man's experience of change. But he seems to have thought that a live universe with events unexpected even by himself would be more interesting than a dead one. Karl Popper, Unended Quest, An Intellectual Autobiography Relation to Physics Eternalism takes its inspiration from physics, especially the riot dyke putnam argument, in which the relativity of simultaneity is used to show that each point in the universe can have a different set of events that are in its present moment. According to presentism this is impossible because there is only one present moment that is instantaneous and encompasses the entire universe. Some philosophers also appeal to a specific theory which is timeless, in a more radical sense than the rest of physics, the theory of quantum gravity. This theory is used, for instance, in Julian Barber's theory of timelessness. On the other hand, George Ellis argues that time is absent in cosmological theories because of the details they leave out. Recently H. R. Vauillet Nikolic has argued that a block time model solves the black hole information paradox.